Hi, in this video I'll take you through the derivation of the relationship between CP and CV which are the specific heats at constant pressure and the specific heats at constant volume per unit mole of gas. So as usual we'll take a gas inside a cylinder and there is a piston there and we'll put a burner below it and supply heat to the gas. The gas takes that heat and divides that into two parts. One, its increase in internal energy and second, any work done on the piston, if any. So let me take off that cylinder just for the purpose of an image and we can see now that the gas is taking that heat, the gas is getting heated up and divides itself into two parts, internal energy and work done. So let's take uh, the gas and put it into separate cylinders and let the initial conditions be the same the same pressure, volume and temperature in both the cylinders. Then we must heat up both the cylinders. One cylinder should be a constant volume process and the other cylinder should be a constant pressure process. And we must heat it very carefully so that the increase in temperature is same for both the cylinders. This is very important. Now because the increase in temperature is same it means that the internal energy increase in both the cylinders is the same. This is the whole purpose of keeping the same temperature increase in both cylinders. So when you apply the first law of thermodynamics, the delta U becomes same for both the processes, for both the cylinders. Now let's start with the constant volume process gas cylinder. The volume does not increase, so it's a vertical graph. So there's no work done. There's no area under the curve. This fact that work done is zero is plugged in now and we combine the work done with the first law of thermodynamics. So in that equation of the first law of thermodynamics, the W factor becomes zero. So delta QV becomes equal to the increase in internal energy. Now coming to the other gas cylinder, the constant pressure process. Here the work done is not zero, it's P delta V uh, because the volume is increasing but the pressure is not increasing. So there is no delta P here. The P is constant and the volume is changing. And this work done, we plug it into the first law of thermodynamics for the constant pressure process. And then we can substitute the constant volume internal energy, as you saw there. Now, if you take a quick look at this graph, it's a straight line. So the area under the curve is a rectangle and length into width is area. The length is delta V and the height is P. That's it. So that's how you get P delta V. And that's why you don't see a delta P. Now for an ideal gas, PV is equal to nRT. So P delta V is nothing but N into R into delta T because N and R are constants here. So only thing that can change is delta T. Plug that into the previous equation. So we have gone one more step and you get delta QV plus nR delta T on the right hand side. Having done that, we must play some chess and get everything into the form CP minus CV is equal to R. So on the right hand side of the equation we want to get rid of all the other terms around R. So divide both sides of the equation by N delta T. So R will remain alone on the right hand side and the other terms will become same as CP and CV which is the, uh, the heat required per uh, mole per uh, in degree rise in temperature. So that way you'll get CP is equal to CV plus R which means that CP minus CV is equal to R. I hope this video was useful to you. Thank you and have a great day.